What's going on and welcome to this air oil separator discussion video. I recently installed an IAG air oil separator in my 2020 STI and I'd like this video to serve as a pre-installation discussion so that you can learn exactly why an air oil separator might be necessary, the theory of how it all works, how it interfaces with this STI in particular and what the device looks like out of the box since it can look a bit confusing at first glance. I want to point out that this is not an install video. I'll link to that separate video up above and in the video description. So there's a few options out there when it comes to air oil separators, but I settled on the IAG because it seemed to be engineered to address all of the challenges of the problem that it's made to fix. We have a lot going on with this device right here, and I can tell you right now that it feels very solid and it looks to be of very high quality. This right here is the canister that separates the oil from the crankcase gases. So in order to get the oil out, we have to feed the device the crankcase gases, and that's what these three intake ports are for. Why three, you might ask? Well, because the EJ engine actually has three ports that relieve crankcase pressure. So through the magic of editing, I wanted to show you what I mean by that and why the air oil separator has three ports. Now, I'm mid-installation right now, and all of this is shown in the installation video. You can see right there the passenger side valve cover breather port, which is one of the ports on the AOS that I just showed you. On top of the block, beneath the intake, you can see your main drain line, and this is where the AOS will dump the oil back. And of course, over here on the driver side, you have your third breather port, and that's the reason why the air oil separator has three intake ports, because this particular engine vents those gases on those three locations. Along the side of the air oil separator are two openings, one up here and one down here. Those two openings right there are for your coolant. So you're actually going to route coolant through this and the reason for the coolant is to get the air oil separator as close to the temperature of the engine as you can get it. That's going to minimize condensation issues within the cylinder when the car experiences large temperature fluctuations. It should prevent water from collecting within the canister and mixing with the oil. The air oil separator taps in line into this coolant reservoir on top as you see right here and you'll get a much better view shortly when I showcase the entire finished product. As you can probably guess, on the bottom here, you'll find your drain port, and this actually is going to feed all of that oil separated from the gases back into the engine, which is the whole point of this device, and the main distinguishing feature between this and a catch can. This will dump the oil back into the port that I showed you on top of the block in the middle of the engine. On top here, you have three ports. Two will go into the crankcase ventilation sensors that used to be connected to the two valve cover ports. And the third has the new PCV valve that comes with the air oil separator and that will get installed on the PCV vacuum line on the intake manifold. Here you can see that line coming out of the air oil separator. It will route under the intercooler and connect right here under the throttle body. Don't forget to check out my full installation video for a step-by-step -step tutorial to get you through this install if all of this seems daunting to you. On the back of the cylinder, you'll install your mounting bracket a set distance for a standard installation. However, if the configuration in your engine bay changes, you can actually move it up or down as you need. The drain port is also adjustable. You can actually take these Allen screws off and rotate the drain port if you need to. So if your engine bay changes and you install something else in the future and you need to move some stuff around, then you have options. As a kit, I'm very pleased with the quality of everything included. Nothing seems sketchy to me and for the most part, everything is included for the installation. I cover the tools you will need in my installation video. Now I wanna show you the finished product so that you get a clear picture of what the AOS is doing and how. Okay, so now that the system is fully installed, I wanted to give you a good walkthrough of where all of these hoses are going and why, and explain to you exactly why we need the system to begin with. This is an internal combustion engine, and as such, it is not a fully efficient engine, okay? Nothing really is fully efficient, and one of the areas in which the engine lacks efficiency is in the combustion process itself. So you have your piston, which is inside the combustion chamber, and the combustion process is going on, and it's driving the piston up and down, and that's driving the crankshaft below it, and of course, that's driving the car. And that's a very simplified way of putting it, but that's essentially what's going on, and that's one of the areas in which the engine is not fully efficient. The pistons within the cylinder have piston rings, and the job of the piston rings is to prevent the oil from the crankcase from making its way up into the combustion chamber where it could foul the cylinder walls and cause knock. And as we all know, knock can actually destroy an engine. It's also there to ensure that none of those gases that are generated during the combustion process make their way through the rings, blowing by the rings into the crankcase 
thereby pressurizing the crankcase. And that's exactly what happens. All cars will have some amount of blow-by that makes it into the crankcase and pressurizes the crankcase. They need a way to vent that pressure out. They used to vent that pressure into the atmosphere. That's not good for the environment. So now most cars will have one form or another of a PCV system, a positive crankcase ventilation system. The job of the PCV system is to take all of those gases and depressurize the crankcase. And it does that by taking the gases and routing them back into the intake. The problem with that system is that the crankcase gases actually have vaporized oil within them. This problem could actually be very mild or it could actually be very pronounced depending on the engine, depending on the model, depending on how old the car is, depending if there's any actual physical damage to, to the rings, to the pistons. Okay, there's a lot of variables that go into them, but all cars will have at least a mild amount of blow-by that will pressurize the crankcase. Check this out. This car only has 2,000 miles, and you can already see oil accumulation on these lines. These are the hard breather lines that are coming out. If you see oil already accumulated right here, you know that this oil is making its way into the intake, and that's the reason right here why we're installing this air oil separator to begin with. This particular car actually vents the crankcase gases in three different locations, okay? You have a passenger side valve cover breather poured over here. You're gonna have one on the driver's side over there, and there's one right beneath the throttle body on top of the block in the center, okay? Those three locations actually vent crankcase gases into the intake. And as you can imagine, all three of those locations are represented on the air oil separator right there. So if you follow those three hoses, you're gonna see that one of the hoses goes right into the passenger side valve cover, the other hose goes right into the driver's side valve cover, and then that very bottom hose over there, the thicker one, actually goes to the center of the block right here. Okay, so you're taking all of those gases that were coming out of the engine, and instead of running them through the PCV system of the car, you're running them through the air oil separator. So to maintain system pressure, you, you have all those gases actually coming back out. That's what these hoses are for right here. You have that hose right there that's plugged into this ventilation sensor right here. And the one next to it is plugged into that ventilation sensor down here. That's going to maintain system pressure and keep the system happy. And of course, the third and very important location through which that happens is that top hose right there. And that hose actually has the PCV that came with the air oil separator installed in line and it routes underneath the intercooler onto the intake manifold right here. Because as part of the air oil separator installation, we actually removed the entire PCV assembly from the car. So we're replacing the PCV system of the car with the air oil separator. So now you know where the air oil separator is getting its gases from and where it's putting them back. And of course, the main purpose of the air oil separator is to take those gases and separate the oil. So it swirls the gases in there. It takes the oil out. And if you remember that drain port on the bottom of the air oil separator, well, that line will run underneath the intercooler this way. And it actually goes to that same port in the middle of the block right here. So that port will actually have a Y splitter. One of the ends will go to an input on the air oil separator, feeding at the gases, and the other end of the Y splitter will actually accept the oil coming back from the air oil separator back into the engine. The final two hoses of the air oil separator, one's right here and the other one's right beneath it, okay? And those are your coolant lines. You can see right here, there's a coolant reservoir, and there used to be a line that went right from this barb right here into the turbo. So all we did is we took that line out and we put the air oil separator in line. So you can see that this hose right here is going to the top of the air oil separator and then the bottom hose is going to the turbo. And all we're doing is taking that coolant from here, routing it through the air oil separator and sending it back, thereby keeping the air oil separator as close to engine temperature as possible. And that's gonna prevent condensation issues. So that's all of your lines in the air oil separator. And now you know what they all do. So it could seem kind of daunting if you don't know what's going on. There's a lot of hoses coming out of it. You know, it's lovingly known as the octopus. But once you know what they're all doing, it becomes much simpler to really understand what's going on. Because the air oil separator takes those oils and dumps them back into the engine. That's how it differentiates from a catch can. A catch can will actually grab the oil. It will do something very similar in that it'll take the gases the same way as the air oil separator will, and it'll remove the oil from it. But unlike the air oil separator, the catch can is it's going to actually just collect the oil within the canister. 
So it becomes a maintenance item. Every car will be different, but you actually have to physically go in there and take the oil out of the canister when it becomes full. So as you can imagine, the catch can will be a much simpler installation. It's actually much cheaper as well, but you do have to keep track of it. Whereas the air oil separator, once you install it, you know, it's made to just sit there and do its job without you messing with it. So whether you get the IAG or a different air oil separator, the theory of operation is essentially the same. So it's going to be doing exactly the same thing. Now you know how they operate and you're better informed and you can decide whether to get an air oil separator. Regardless of what you pick, I have a step-by-step -step installation covering the installation of this particular air oil separator in this car. So make sure you check out that video. I'll link to it up above and in the video description. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If this was useful to you, I'd appreciate a like. Let me know what you think about this. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing for more content just like this. And until next video, take care.